Hi, and welcome to episode 78 of C3 Crystals, Cauldrons, and Cocktails. I'm Ren. And I'm River. And today we are going to be talking about herbs. Yes, But more herbs. specifically, we are talking about protection herbs and luck herbs. Yes. Oh gosh, I dropped my pencil. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but first, what are we drinking? Uh, today has been a day. It's a... Uh... I agree. <laughs> it's a day. So I just grabbed some wine. My I have bottles. My my husband asked me yesterday, he's like, Do you do you need more wine? I'm like, Yes. And he's like, Well, how many do you have? I said, I don't know, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> so he bought me some more wine. So I'm drinking my wine. I just I didn't have the energy today to work on a cocktail and Yeah, yeah. Ugh. I'm right there with you. I have a diet Pepsi. Wild cherry oh. diet Pepsi, okay. but like my husband and I, we literally just got back from the grocery store, and you, I know you're over here texting me an hour ago, going, hey, "Yeah, on a podcast," and <laughs> I forgot my phone at, at home, and I'm like, "Oh, okay," you know, and I get, yeah, home my husband and- was like, D- "When do I start dinner? When are y'all going to be podcasting?" I'm like, "I don't know." <laughs> yeah, that was my bad. Like we get, we get home, and we're packing the groceries, and I'm like, "Oh crap." You know, I'm like, I think River probably texted me. It's like, when are we podcasting? For sure you were. You did. I, I sure did. <laughs> oh, yeah. But um, do you want me to start with the my yeah, first so herb? I guess we can alternate. You do your, because mm-hmm. all of yours are luck and all of mine are protection. Mm-hmm. So you do your first luck one and then I'll do yeah. a protection one. I thought I needed a little bit of luck. So I decided, why not? Search yeah, my I'm, herbs. I'm luck. excited <laughs> to hear about it. I could use some luck about right now too. Yeah. So, my first herb is turmeric. And to my surprise, I searched high and low to figure out like anything about turmeric. The only thing like you, you know, general Google search, what is like lucky herbs, what herbs bring luck, you know, like, and a whole list comes up and turmeric's on the list. And I was like, oh, we've never talked about turmeric. Yeah. Turmeric's really cool. And is um, turmeric the one that kind of tastes like licorice or is that a different one? I think it's a different one. This one's earthy. Earthy. This one's, this one's um, from. Oh, is it yellow? Yeah. It's native to is Southern it... Asia and Pacific oh. Islands, similar to what um india uses and their curries that's what i was thinking that's maybe that's what i'm thinking of i might be thinking of Uh curries but do they use it in indian food because yes i love indian food okay so i I think i know what you're talking about then okay okay so i searched high and low for folklore and like magical properties what how you can use turmeric and basically i just found general knowledge like i i couldn't find anything like i'm prep you guys could probably just it's been a long day for me too. So it might just be like that one website that I'm skipping over. If well, I it's hard, more, you guys. We'll do another episode. <laughs> we do. We have full-time jobs. You uh-huh. know, we're both wives. We both have house chores that need to be done and, you know, stuff like grocery shopping. You just went grocery shopping. So it is yeah. really hard some days to try to get our research in, which I'd love to do. It's one of my, it's a very calming thing to me. It makes me very happy to do the research for these episodes. I love talking witchcraft and I love, oh, yeah, obviously, it's so much fun. Uh, you know, talking magic. Um, so, but there are some days where it's really hard for us to get everything done organized was, yeah someday maybe we could do this as our full-time job that Hopefully. would be amazing that's so, the goal manifest it for us <laughs> absolutely anyway uh, so turmeric yeah yeah so i'll just like go over what i found and if you guys know more feel free to let us know via email via instagram tiktok patreon whatever you want right facebook whatever yeah so turmeric is thought to okay wait let me go back let me tell you what turmeric is, okay? Okay. So turmeric is native to Southern Asia and some Pacific islands. Um, in the places where it grows wild, it has a history of use of uh, being a medicinal herb going back about 4,000 years. Okay. Uh, turmeric was known in ancient Greece. It never really caught on except as his dye. So it wasn't used as anything ingestible. It was just only used to dye fabrics. Yellow. And that's a... Yes. 
And that's a lot of what I found about turmeric was it was used as a dyeing regimen instead of a, like, I guess, magical like food. element or food. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah. So it was mostly used as dye. But in Europe, it became more witchcraft based. And that's where it kind of started in the magical properties. Oh, interesting. So turmeric is thought to cleanse the aura and remove negativity. Okay. And this is according to the Hindu belief, actually. And so turmeric is associated with the planet Jupiter. If you guys are in line with any of your astrology base, you know, use turmeric. Mm-hmm. And I, we still need to do more astrology. We episodes, do, but we've, <laughs> we've done some, but not enough. I've still. Yeah. Even yeah. the little bit that we talked about, I'm like, I don't remember. So we really need to do more about that. Yeah. Yes. Very, yes. And I'm over here like, this goes with the planet Jupiter. And I don't. Yeah, I've got that stuff for my herbs too. And don't necessarily know okay. what it means. Yeah. Which yeah. Um, in Hindu beliefs, uh, the planet Jupiter is ruled by Lord Vishu. Vishnu. I'm okay. so sorry. Um, <laughs> and this is the Hindu god who protects creation. I think and, we're going to become known as that's that podcast that can't pronounce anything yeah, right. I don't know it? how to pronounce anything. And let me tell you, I look up these pronunciations and it still goes terrible. <laughs> <laughs> um, and this it's also associated with the goddess of Lakshmi. Lakshmi. Okay. okay. The Hindu goddess who is the energy of Vishnu and known for bringing good fortune. So that's okay. where the luck all comes luck. in. I see. Okay. And I have like a little, did you know, it okay. has nothing to do with magic, but uh, did you know that turmeric is placed on the forehead of newborn babies and sprinkled on the seri, ser- I tried to, you know, find a pronunciation of brides <laughs> as good as a good luck charm. Oh, neat. So I thought that that was really cool. Uh, but sprinkle high quality organic turmeric into savory dishes um, or take a bath in it. You know, that's what I was going to ask you. Uh-huh. It won't turn you yellow. I don't think so. Okay. I don't think so. It doesn't, doesn't say anything about turning you yellow, but it would be a good tan, <laughs> a good tanning <laughs> regimen. <laughs> yeah. 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 And so as you do so, as you either use it in your food or bath or anything that you can think of, I mean, I can't think of anything off the top of my head right now. Mm-hmm. Um, but you speak positive intentions and wishes for either a new year. So you could do this at the beginning of the year, beginning of the month, beginning of the day, whatever it is. Um, I could say probably even in spells, like sprinkling it in yeah. a spell jar. That's or, what I was just thinking. Yeah. Do a luck spell jar. That would be cool. Yeah. yeah. And you speak or wish your positive intentions into that. Mm-hmm. And so... Um, but you have to ask wisely. The thing with turmeric is turmeric is associated to these goddesses and gods, Hindu gods. And so you want to ask wisely because you don't want to seem as if you're greedy. Oh. They don't like greed. And now I understand if you don't worship or are in tune with these gods and goddesses. Mm-hmm. Um, but based on where turmeric is from, based on the history of turmeric. Mm-hmm. They're associated with these goddesses, and so if you use it out of greed, they won't be willing to help you achieve your desires. Yeah, for sure. I can see that. Um, so, yes. So most of our sources for witchcraft of turmeric is mostly for purification properties as well. Okay. So when I tried to deep dive into luck properties, it just says Turmeric is a lucky herb. It doesn't tell me why. It doesn't say anything. It's mostly about purification, which I thought was really interesting. It is interesting. Um, So it's basically you can purify like your home, sprinkle it around your home outside, and it gets rid of malevolent spirits, particularly particularly, um, angry dead. And it can, um, the smell is said to drive those spirits away. So that, it's to use if you already have bad spirits. Uh-huh. One of the ones I talk about is to prevent bad spirits, but it won't it won't drive them away once yeah. you have them. Yeah, this one. So says this it'll one drive will them drive away. them away. Okay, be, they can be sent away because of the smell of the turmeric. 
Okay. And turmeric is also indicated for spells of healing, strength, and vitality since it's potent in medicinal herbs and it, and general tonics. Okay. Um, and also, while we're magical properties, turmeric's golden color can also be used. So you oh, yeah. can kind of maybe take out the uh, luck property. I mean, not, I mean, depending on how you do your craft. Well, and instead and of your intent can be focused intent, on, yeah, on the yeah. color. And so whatever, you know, we've talked about um, gold and yellow being associated with happiness and abundance. You can use it towards that in any spell. If you need that type of, you know, color, instead of maybe mm-hmm. using a, a yellow candle, you can use turmeric. Turmeric. Yeah. That's a great idea. Um, the gold is also associated with the energy of the sun, prosperity, success, and healing. And so you can always use it in your sun magic, however you need like that. Yeah. You know, uh, Ostera just passed and that would have been a good one to use on your altar or in your Ostara spells. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And then one thing that I never even thought about was since turmeric in its history was used first as a dyeing method, you mm-hmm. can use the turmeric to dye something that you need for your craft. I love that idea. And an so altar could, cloth or something. Yeah. Something like <gasps> That's an a altar great cloth, idea. Or, you know, the um, the bags that the hexing bags. I know we don't mm-hmm. hex. But if you do and you or need the something, sachets, whatever yeah, you sachets, call them. Whatever. Yeah. Whatever. Mm-hmm it may be you can always use something like that and dye it and so you have your intent in the bag or the material that, itself that is brilliant yeah which is really I like cool that. Mm-hmm. now again i say i don't have much but that's pretty that's all that i have you know it's not I mean, much I, I feel like with turmeric it would be great for a kitchen witch because yes. you could put it into your cooking especially so if you like cooking you know if you like the indian foods and the curries, you know, scatter that turmeric in there and turn your meal into a spell and, you know, make, make your family lucky. Yeah. I mean, I need all the luck I can get. Oh my gosh. Mm, (laughs) So I might, I might start with some of my herbs. I might, I might just plop a turmeric (laughs) <laughs> jar of turmeric in the front of my house like sprinkle it on myself before I leave that's hilarious you could put <laughs> okay. that in the spritz you know how you do cinnamon on your front door at the beginning of every month yeah. add yeah, some turmeric to it oh that's a good idea yeah I think so too I might need to do that because your girl's been out of luck for her whole <laughs> life <laughs> I just worry and and this is a bad thing because when you have when you're not focused and clear things can can happen and I always worry in the back of my mind that I'm going to bring bad luck yeah and if that's in your mind you don't want to be cast in anything because you're going to bring that in yeah it's got to be one of those like Mm -hmm. yeah you intently focus on something yeah it's got to be and you got to do it carefully you don't want to upset whatever gods or you know whatever it is that might be yeah. associated with that. Yeah. Okay. I so agree. I'm doing protective herbs and my first one is rosemary. And I don't think we've done rosemary before. I don't think so. Y'all, we tried to go back through our old notes. We, in the beginning, we didn't do very well with notes because we were just chatting. Mm-hmm. And now we actually keep notes because the intent is to write blogs every week, which <laughs> Obviously, we haven't done that we either. Done that. <laughs> but we do have notes. Um, but I don't. I, I don't remember what herbs we've talked about. So, but I picked rosemary because it is a very strong protective herb, and it's so strong that it requires very little for it to be activated. It is specifically one of the best protection herbs for purification purposes. You can use a uh, rosary. I mean, a rosemary smoke stick to cleanse your home, your property, or magical space with rosemary. It'll help keep mm-hmm. away hexes, heartbreak, nightmares, and spirits. Hmm. If you need to cleanse something, you can burn rosemary in the air. You don't have to have an actual smoke stick. Um, you can actually just burn rosemary. You know what it looks like. It looks like a little pine leaf, a pine yeah, yeah. branch. Yeah. And you can burn that and... Um, waft the smoke with it or you can keep some in a small satchel 
um, uh, placing little small satchels around your home. You could do make it into a potion or even just rosemary water, which, you know, sometimes when I travel, I'll I'll see uh, hotels that have ice water with they'll have oranges and, you know, different fruits and they'll have rosemary in it, which is interesting. I had no idea it was a protection um, herb. So that's pretty cool. You hate rosemary. I do not eat it. I do not like to eat it. But, but it you, don't is like, a, you don't even like the smell of it. I'm not a fan. <laughs> it, it, it is. People really, really love it with chicken. It's supposed to be this great accompaniment to chicken. I, I really dislike rosemary. See, it's okay. You know, like. You know, like Bonefish Grill, it has the rosemary in its oil that you dip your bread into. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, I can handle that amount. That's about it. Okay. No, I mean, rosemary, I can tolerate it. It's not something that I want to eat every day. But, Mm -hmm. and I also, I don't mind the smell. Like I can have the smell. I can, you know, I can dig it. (laughs) I'm not a fan. What was it in um, Practical Magic? She said to always keep rosemary by your garden gate, which probably has protection. For protection. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, A rosemary plant can grow up to five feet. Oh, wow. In the spring and summer, it might put out these little cute little blue flowers if the weather is humid enough, which in Georgia, the United States and Georgia, it's very humid. The word rosemarinus is from Latin, meaning dew of the sea, because it is very uh, prevalent in the Mediterranean areas right on the coast. Okay. Now, Christian folklore, I was trying to find folklore about it. Christian folklore Mm -hmm. says that rosemary will grow for 33 years until it reaches the height of Christ that he was when he died, and then it will grow no more. And apparently, rosemary's flowers, you know, they're they're blue. Um, They're picked, they picked up their blue color because Mary spread the Virgin Mary spread her blue cloak over a rosemary bush to try to dry while they were fleeing to Egypt. Oh. So that's that's interesting. And then I have another legend. Did you know that there is a legend that rosemary wards off vampires? And oh. This came from uh, an 11th century monastery where they had grown herbs, you know, to use as natural insect repellent Mm -hmm. and somehow they determined that wow this works at keeping vampires away too and i'm like do vampires count as insects maybe or pests i mean i would say they're pests but like let's (laughs) say they're associated with mosquitoes mosquitoes drink blood oh that's true Uh Mm -hmm. that's true i didn't even make that connection i was just like okay okay but that's interesting (laughs) Uh, Rosemary is associated with Aphrodite and appears in many of the ancient images about her. Some folklore, uh, there's there's a lot of different folklore about Rosemary. If you feel that your home is plagued by a bad atmosphere or a streak of bad luck, which this is luck again, do a smoke cleanse using Rosemary. Rosemary can be used to ward off fairies, poltergeists, and spirits. The Irish Mm -hmm. believed that hanging rosemary over the cradle would stop fairies from swapping a baby with a changeling, which Mm -hmm. we talked about changelings before. That said, rosemary was also dedicated to the fairies in Portugal and used in Spain to ward off the evil eye. And if you make a box from its wood and you sniff it every day, you'll stay eternally youthful. Okay. Oh. And I'm like, does rosemary have wood? Because it's like, <laughs> I it's mean, like little sprigs of. Is it like, it comes off a bush, like a. I don't know. I mean, I guess like the little twig, like the twigs. It would That's be a wood. lot of little twigs to make a box. Anyway, Just you snip it every day. <laughs> you know, and I'm sitting here thinking, you know, we're no, gonna snort, no, no, snort no, the. No, no. <laughs> We're going to snort it so we can t- stay Ow. eternally young. <laughs> Ow. I hope the kids don't listen to this one. <laughs> oh, They're going, my Mom, really? <laughs> Rosemary branches, which, so, okay, so there is wood. 
were often woven into wreaths worn by brides at weddings, and okay. decorated rosemary branches were often presented as wedding gifts to wedding guests because of the luck, not the luck factor, the protection factor. Wow, you're st- you're stealing my thunder. <laughs> I am. Wow. <laughs> In Wales, it was distributed to funeral guests so that they could throw it into the hole with the coffin as the coffin was lowered. I don't know what that signifies. I I guess to protect the dead from, you know, being dragged to hell or something. I don't know. I guess. Or maybe to keep it from coming back. Maybe. Oh, maybe. I don't know. Maybe. Look at me. I'm going. I'm on fire. (laughs) (laughs) You are. Go, girl. Uh Uh-huh. Ancient Greek women used to chew on sprigs of rosemary to achieve a natural high while meditating. Oh, oh, okay. Isn't that weird? Yeah. There is an old saying that says, where rosemary flourishes, the woman rules. Oh. And in England, it was believed that rosemary would not grow in a garden of a home unless the mistress was the master. Oh. Isn't that funny? That's so interesting. In France, rosemary was burnt along with juniper berries in sick rooms and hospitals to purify the air. During the Middle Ages, it was hung around the neck to to protect from the plague. And also carrying a a twig of rosemary would protect you from the evil eye. Okay. It is believed to attract fairies and good energies. Rosemary and twigs hung over cradles. Oh, I said that already. Prevented the fairies from stealing children. Uh Uh-huh. Um. Use fresh or hang to dry in bunches, still on the branch. Dried rosemary should be added early in the cooking so that the flavors have time to infuse in the dish. So maybe for me, I would add it at the very end. So only a little Mm -hmm. teeny tiny bit would be infused into the dish. Yeah. Rosemary is useful in ritual baths and for making sacred herbal water for ritual cleansing, blessing, and purification. Bathing in rosemary is said to enhance your memory and will make you oh. more memorable to those you meet throughout the day. Okay. Interesting. Uh, so I need to sprinkle some rosemary in my bath before I have an exam. <laughs> <laughs> and turmeric for the luck. And turmeric for the luck. And <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> mm-hmm. Place rosemary under your pillow to help you to remember your dreams and to keep away nightmares and unwanted nighttime visitations. Okay. If you haven't chosen your mate yet, and you have several that you're thinking about, you know, God, there's these 10 guys. I can't decide between them. (laughs) Uh You can name a pot for each one and plant rosemary in each pot. And the one that grows the fastest and strongest is your best choice. I like that. (laughs) (laughs) Or if you don't have very any options for suitors, make a poppet of yourself and stuff it with rosemary to attract a lover to you. Okay. Okay. You you can also use this (laughs) poppet to attract healing energy. It also attracts Uh healing energy uh as well. I guess whatever your intent is at the time (laughs) that you make said (laughs) poppet. Scientific evidence does suggest that rosemary does in fact stimulate the memory centers of the brain. So use a sprig of rosemary as a bookmarker, which when I read that, I'm like, oh, so we'll remember where the page is. And I was like, no, no, that's not. (laughs) Oh my gosh. (laughs) Yeah, that was a, that was a river moment. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, Wear rosemary oil when you're studying and on the day of your test to help you remember what it is you need to know. Did you know that rosemary has over three times more iron than spinach. And it is also very high in ox- antioxidants and vitamin A. So it's a good, good for you. Okay. Okay. The correspondences are fire. It, the chakra that it goes to is the root. In astrology, it, it is equated with the moon, the sun, and mercury. The holiday that it goes to is Yule. And the rune is Jera. So all a lot of that has information that I don't really know what it means. Like we really should do a podcast episode on on runes. I, I need to write that down because I I make runes and I've thrown runes before, but I don't have it 
memorized. I have to look it up every time I play. I, I say play with them. I, it's, not, <laughs> it's not playing with them. Wow, every time I use over here them. Playing with runes. And... Oh, my Lord. That's not what I meant. Every uh, time I know what you mean. I know use mean. them. I have to look up. And what does this mean? I guess I'm still that way with tarot, too. I can't remember. Yeah, what each tarot card represents until so I'm still at the point of looking it up. But, but hey, that's okay because that's the thing. I'm gonna go off on a second tangent, like a, a, a tangent <laughs> that will last a one. second. Yeah, a little okay. one. That's what I don't understand about the schooling system. Okay, mm-hmm. because we have access to things at our fingertips, right? Mm-hmm. So I understand memorizing things and taking an exam. But when you're doing it in such like a hastily rush and you try to shove all this knowledge and information into your brain just for an exam, and then after your exam, you forget it all. Yeah. There is no reason to do that when we have the knowledge at our fingertips. It's the same thing with witchcraft. You don't have to know everything because we can, can always look it up. At look the it up. We can ask other people all of that. And eventually it will stick. I learned better in classes yeah. that um we talked a lot where it was mm-hmm. like uh, i did um a lot of philosophy classes i just loved philosophy for some reason and i learned those better than other classes because even though memorization was a key to those tests we sat there and talked about well what if what if he really meant this and what if what if this philosopher, you know, I mean, it was just, I learned more by talking. Yeah. That's part of why we started this podcast mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. we yeah. are learning witchcraft through yeah. talking about it. But so. it's funny because we're like, I don't remember when we talked about it. <laughs> yeah. We talked about herbs, but don't, I don't remember what remember. it was. And I, I know we talked about, you know, astrology, but we don't remember. Yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> no, but it was funny because we, you know, we have a, we got a dog a little while ago maybe a couple weeks ago. And um, we were taking her out and it's warmer now. And so there are dandelions growing. Oh, right? I love dandelions. And I was like, oh, those are perfect. And our dog eats grass, you know, like, and it's not big. <laughs> it's like, you know, it's not, she'll eat anything. She'll, she picked up and it's so nasty, but there was like, we didn't see it. I, I should have, it was bright pink in the middle of the parking lot. It was a old, a old person's vape, right? Oh, like it's like a, no. a disposable one. Yeah. And she picks it up. I'm like, drop it. Like immediately she drops it. Cause I didn't know what it was. She drops it. person's vape. Ugh. So she eats everything. Right. Mm-hmm. And so I was looking at the dandelions. I was like, Oh, that's a good thing for her to eat <laughs> based on what we talked about. Yes. And I was like, why don't you eat that? <laughs> why don't you eat that instead of these Stupid things that you find on the floor. And she's been chewing on my books. Ugh. Oh, no. Hide your witch books. I know, exactly. The witch books are on a high shelf, and the books she's eating are the books that I have neglected. And they're like old books I haven't touched, except for one of them was a good one. Yeah, we don't talk about that. Anyway, <laughs> oops. Yeah. Anyways, yeah. But okay. Well, that's yeah. all I had for Rosemary. Okay. So I was going to do lavender next, but I decided I wanted to do bamboo. <laughs> Okay. I, I'm excited about lavender. bamboo. I love bamboo. It grows here in Georgia, which is so weird. It's it's a, a invasive species, actually. Really? Uh-huh. And I actually didn't know that from my research. I just knew that because I know useless information sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too, unfortunately. Yeah. I but wish I could actually... make money on that. Oh, I know. I know. <laughs> me too. <laughs> It's actually an invasive species. I don't know when it was brought over, but if you plant it, it'll never go away. But isn't it like a really good, don't they use it in flooring? Oh, it's you a can really use good... it for a lot. Okay. Yeah. So part of my research, I didn't write this down because I didn't think I was going to need it, but I read somewhere that um, it is very durable, but if you use it in the correct way, it's so strong but it'll bend to what you need. So it's very That's flexible, cool. but it mm-hmm. won't snap per se. That's so, it's, so one cool. of, it's one of the strongest, um, uh, I guess, herbs you could say. Does out it there. only grow in hot areas? Like that we're I here in Georgia, know. it's hot and humid. I don't know where else it grows. So it's native to China, China, no? and um, 
more of the where are we eastern countries western mm-hmm. countries however you look at the map because <laughs> we're a circle <laughs> yeah you know that that always you know they're like oh in the west and i'm like but west from whom <laughs> yeah west from where yeah so, mm. yeah so yeah whatever okay um, so like china but i don't know what their climate is over there um well if you okay did you know <laughs> I didn't. What is it? (laughs) When you look at a map and you have our, so, you know, you have our, uh, uh, longitudinal, Mm -hmm. called longitudinal sections, like time zones are different. We have horizontal ones and the ones that we correspond horizontally, uh, we're in the same climate. Oh, Uh so So where is China compared to Georgia in the United States? uh, Probably it's probably, probably Southern China. Or maybe not even China at all. Maybe China is huge, isn't it? It's huge. Yeah. Uh, but if you think about it in that sort of way, France, when I traveled to France a long time ago, France, um, we were packing and it was on a school uh, trip. It was like a study abroad type of thing. Mm-hmm. And uh, we asked, what do we pack and where? And they were like, oh, well, you don't really need to pack anything different because we're in the same climate zone. Oh, interesting. Okay. Mm-hmm. Because you know how as you get closer to the equator, it's warmer, but as you yeah, go so, further up north, it's colder. So basically, bamboo will grow all the way around the earth in the same area. I think so. Yeah. Okay. Correct me sense. if I'm wrong. <laughs> I think that, that sounds logical to me. <laughs> I've been in school for six years and uh, I sound great. <laughs> I, I've been out of school for a long, long time and I don't remember anything. So, hey, yeah. you know, whatever. Greg, correct us. <laughs> oh, and he will too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's our plant man. Yeah. He knows stuff. Yeah. It's good though. We like it. It is. We do. We love it. Okay. So bamboo is known as the tallest growing grass in the world. It's a grass. It's a grass. It's, and it's one of the fastest growing plants as well. That's so, what I heard, which is why I think it's so good because it's renewable so quickly. Yeah. yeah. It, it's great as a resource. Mm-hmm. And then I'm going to answer a little bit about what uh, whether it kind of grows in. So bamboo grows in a wide range of conditions. And it's from like from temperate mountains to the tropics. So it's okay. basically an invasive species that can live anywhere and is hard to kill off. I mean, but but it could be the savior of our planet at some it point could, it sounds yeah, it like could be. and uh pandas like to eat it so <laughs> and we love pandas pandas are adorable okay so um bamboo stems and the stems are called c u l m s culms culms okay culms are incredibly flexible and strong making them an excellent material for anything like furniture construction yeah Though raw bamboo plants contain a substance called taxophyllin, which uh, turns to cyanide when digested. Oh, no. So pickled or fermented bamboo is a staple in many Asian cuisine. So you have to, you just cannot, we as humans cannot ingest like raw bamboo. But pandas eat raw bamboo. I, they probably have a different enzyme in there. Either that or they only eat it. They only they, eat the parts. Yeah. The, yeah. yeah. They, they yeah. like peel it. I'm they do. They do. Expert. <laughs> Me either. But they do. They like peel it. Yeah. yeah. Bamboo roots are rhizomatic, making this plant difficult to eradicate. So it's very fast growing. There's so many species of bamboo. They're considered invasive. That's so, so interesting. Bamboo isn't native to southern U.S. Um, where you know where we live but it's um, here i've it's seen common. it um because people plant it everywhere because they like it in their yard they like the look of it whatever mm-hmm. the reason may be um bamboo is co- is a common ingredient in chinese and tibetan medicine and it is used to treat a number of different conditions such as asthma coughs and even gallbladder disorders wow and so um Bamboo is also only administered by properly, like, administered by properly qualified Eastern medicine practitioners. So a lot okay. of, like. They get that cyanide here. stuff out yeah. of it. Yeah. yeah. They know how to do so, it. So bamboo is extensively used in 
East Asian magical practices. And so in the Philippines, bamboo crosses crosses are placed in the fields to promote a good harvest. Okay. In China and Japan, bamboo sticks sticks. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know what. <laughs> are used in divination. I'm going a little loopy. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long day. Talon is Hey, that you she's drinking Coke I'm or drinking Pepsi. 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 Yeah. Um, Taoist ritual, ritual, rituals, <laughs> rituals, rituals incorporate bamboo in many different ways, including calling um, water spirits and um, entwining the bamboo itself in their practices. Literally, like in what they like do. weaving it. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I can some, see that. Yeah, in some areas of Southern Asia, bamboo is associated with death, <gasps> evil spirits, and ghosts. Oh no. Which is how is kind that of, lucky? Yeah, like it's, I'll get to that. <laughs> okay. It's very interesting. So in witchcraft, bamboo is associated with abundance, divination, friendship, longevity, luck, uh, protection, which is what you're okay. talking about, uh, resilience, strength, and wishes. And uh, wishes. Interesting. Many people recommend drying bamboo stems or combs and making a powder of the wood, then burning this powder to break hexes. Interesting. Right? Isn't that like, I know we talked about hexes in our, um, yeah, in our our after bonus episodes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, But I never saw anything about bamboo. And so apparently, whatever the process of changing bamboo and by burning, the powder can break hexes. So the ash from the bamboo or. Okay. Probably. Yeah. Probably the ash. You can also. Amazing. I think so. You can also carve a sigil or a wish into a piece of bamboo and bury it to assist with the manifestation. Interesting. Now we can go further and beyond and say, okay, I'm going to carve my sigil or wish into this bamboo. And then I'm going to go bury it in something that will also help manifest that manifestation. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, like instead of just outside, you know, we're in Georgia, so we have the red Georgia clay. So the red Mm -hmm. Georgia clay might be for something else. So we Mm -hmm. can go and find something else to bury it in. Interesting. Um, You can also place an inscribed piece of bamboo into running water at the same time to also create that manifestation if you don't want to bury it. Okay. And then carrying bamboo or hanging it over a doorway wards off bad luck and bad energy. Interesting. I like that. Now, before I talk more about bamboo, don't get it confused with lucky bamboo because there's something called lucky bamboo and it's that it's not actually bamboo at all and it's completely unrelated to the plant. Really? What yeah. is it? So, I don't know. I didn't look that far. My brain but went, okay, but cool. And <laughs> but it's not bamboo. <laughs> it's but not it's bamboo. got the same name. How but weird it's called is that? Lucky Bamboo, but it has no association with bamboo and luck properties in our craft at all. Okay. So you can plant a bamboo plant in your garden, which which with what we've said, they're hard to eradicate. They're kind of an invasive species. They grow so fast. But if you want year-round luck, plant it in your garden. I, I like that idea. Okay. And oh, I lost my spot. Okay. If you want to make a wish, carve into it, like I said, but this one says, instead of burying it in some like random place or running underwater, have a secluded spot in your garden for your wishes so that you can have some sort of like a wish garden. I love a wish Uh garden. If you want to protect your home, you can carve a protection symbol and then place the bamboo in your garden or like we said, above your Door, Door, wherever mm -hmm. you want it. Um, Bamboo leaves are good for treating upset stomachs and even kill parasites in your body. So you can also. Like make a bamboo tea? Yeah. Is it edible? I mean. I don't know. I guess so. I do not condone ingesting anything based on what I said. (laughs) I I agree. Yes. Uh, For for ditto for everything. Although Uh I do know that you can eat rosemary. But apparently if you chew on rosemary, you might get high. So I don't Eh. know. Eh. Don't know. <laughs> um, bamboo can also help regulate menstrual cycles, which was very interesting. So I say that's lucky on yeah. a good part too. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, the shoots or the combs can be mm-hmm. helped to treat respiratory ailments. Okay. And then as well as some other, you know, gallbladder issues and all of that. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. some people believe that bamboo is an aphrodisiac. <laughs> really? Uh-huh. So we could talk about that in our After Dark series. I, I, I just, <laughs> you know, I keep going back to the fact that it produces cyanide. I'm like, mm, yeah, don't know if I want to mess with that as an yeah. aphrodisiac. Don't know. I mean, aphrodisiac, cyanide, aphrodisiac, question mark. Do you want that? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't want to die. <laughs> well, I guess you would die happy. <laughs> You should see her face. He's she's looking at me, going, <laughs> like, "Oh my oh. god!" <laughs> You're right, though. Um, and then on my last like little stretch, bamboo also re- represents all four elements. Okay. Oh, neat. Because it grows from the earth through water, then passes through the sky to reach, uh, for to reach for the fire of the sun. Interesting. Mm-hmm. I feel That's... like all plants do that. I understand. Yeah. I mean, it was a stretch, but, but it's based on uh, where it's from, like the culture and everything that it's from, okay. bamboo's from. That is how they view bamboo. Is, it represents all four elements. Yeah. Very and cool. that's all that I have on bamboo. Okay. Well, my next protection herb is roses. Okay. So the idea is that because the thorns on the rose protect the flower, the flower will then transfer this protection to you or your spell work. So therefore, roses can be used for any type of protection spell because the power of the rose is, it's a metaphorical thing. You know, mm-hmm. it's got the the protection built into it because of the thorns. Um, a dried flower or bud can lend preservation powers to your magic acting as a good luck charm or talisman. So back onto your side, the good luck. Yeah. yeah. There are so many colors of roses available that that can add to your spell. You can choose whatever color of rose that you need to use in your spell work. Did you know? Okay. There is a famous rose breeder. His name is David Austin, and he spent 15 years and $5 million breeding a rare rose that he called Juliet. And the Juliet rose sold for $15.8 million in 2006, making it the world's most expensive rose. Wow. I was about to say $5 million put into a rose and he sold it for 15. I was like, okay, buddy, you get that money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> get your bag. <laughs> yeah, right? Jeez. Jeez. Roses are known as the queen of all flowers. And did you know archaeologists discovered a rare fossil that dates back 35 35 million years, and it's a rose fossil. So roses existed 35 million years ago. And not only that, but the oldest living, currently living rose now is a thousand years old. Oh. And it is still growing on the wall at this cathedral in Germany, the Hildesheim Cathedral in Germany. It's a thousand okay. years old. Okay. Isn't that crazy? I mean, with how destructive humans are, I'm surprised anything could last that long. Really. Right? Especially cathedrals. They got attacked throughout history all yeah. the time. Yeah. yeah. You can banish harm and negativity by carrying a dried flower as a talisman. Or use the thorns. That's I found a lot of spells that talked about using rose thorns in your spell to bring an end to negativity or harm or as protection. Okay. You, you can use thorns to pierce and cut through metaphysical ties between two people or objects. So say you're trying to, you know, do a cord cutting type spell, you can use rose thorns to achieve the same thing. Okay. Sprinkle rose water on the clothes to add a natural protection to the wearer. If you are feeling, you know, make a rose spray out of the rose petals and you can spray it on yourself before you leave the house. If you're feeling particularly uh, vulnerable, you know, like something's not going right. You think someone's out to get you spray yourself with rose water. Um, Did you know that their petals are edible and that rose water, which you do make by soaking the petals in the water, it's often applied to jellies or jams 
and it's used as flavoring in Indian and Chinese dishes. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. There was a lot on roses, so I've got a lot of information. They actually came up. There were spells that I found online. So a simple protection spell might be to gather nine long pieces of yarn in the color of your choice. Black and red are both really good options for protection and banishment. You separate those nine into sets of three, and you you braid each of those three, and you tie them together at the top. And then you can braid the three sets of three that have been braided into one big braid, or you can leave it as is. And then you take rose thorns and you pierce them into the braids far enough that they'll stay in place. You can add bells or even nails that you punch through just like like the thorns from the roses. And you hang this charm up either on your door, your door frame, or a wall near the door, and it will keep your home safe and sound, protected from malevolent spirits, energies, and people alike. Okay. Or you can do a jar spell. I love my jar spells. I like jar spells. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They work really well for me. I've had a lot of luck with my jar spells. So you need a jar, rose vinegar, um, rose thorns, star anise, rowan berries or rowan bark, apple seeds, and candle wax, which you don't really have to have. You seal the jar when you're done with the candle wax. And so red or black candle wax would be good to seal the jar. And you do need rose vinegar, which uh, you can make yourself, which I'll tell you in a minute. I can't remember which website I got this off of, but it's going to be posted with all of our um, information. So you take your jar and you fill it about three quarters of the way full with rose vinegar. You don't want to fill it completely because we're going to be adding some more stuff to it. Then you add rose thorns, the star anise, the rowan berries and or the bark, and then the apple seeds to the jar. You close the lid and then that's the point where you would seal it with the wax if you want to do that. Um, Some people keep their jars on a shelf or on a table or in a main room of their house or near their door. Other people bury it in their backyard or stash it under the porch. Do whatever feels right for you. Um, The best jar spell I've ever done was a um, sex jar, kind of a lust jar spell where, you know, we've got children it's hard to keep the romance going and so I did one and I keep it on the bedside table right next to us and it has I'm telling you it works um so keep it wherever you think you need the protection you know okay front door would be a good place um so rose vinegar so you can make it yourself you use the vinegar of your choice I like white vinegar but um the girl who whose website I got this from, she liked apple cider vinegar. Mm -hmm. You heat it up to a simmer. While it's heating up, you put rose petals in a glass jar. When the vinegar is heated up to a simmer, you pour that over the rose petals. You got to make sure that you put the vinegar above all of the roses. And then you cover it with plastic. You can't use metal because vinegar and metal do not mix. And then you store it in a place somewhere in a dark, you know, like in a cabinet or somewhere dark for two to three weeks. After the two to three weeks are up, you strain the vinegar, you get rid of the rose petals, and then that vinegar that's left is what you can use for uh, as rose vinegar for any spells that you need. And it can last for up to a year as long as you keep it stored in a cool, dry place, dark place. Okay. Folklore about the roses. There is an abundance of folklore about roses. So Flora, the goddess of spring, she found her dearest nymph dead. She asked the other gods to help turn her loved one into a beautiful flower. So Apollo, Bacchus, Vertunmus, Pomona, and Flora all contributed gifts, and the nymph became a rose, soon to be called the queen of all flowers. Another origin story, uh, this goes back to both of the, all of these stories go back to Roman or Greek times. And the Romans and the Greeks had the same gods, but by different names. So, you know, like Cupid 
I think was Roman and Eros was Greek, or it might be vice versa. But another origin story about the rose concerns Cupid. And he knocked over a bowl of wine and a rose bush grow out of it. And he dedicated it to his mother, Venus. In a different version, he knocked red wine over white roses, which were all that there were at the time. And they became red roses. And that's where the red Mm -hmm. roses came. Mm -hmm. Um, According to Rose Magazine, didn't even know there was such a thing, but I am not surprised to find out that there is. Yeah, Uh, The goddess... Rodanthe tried to oust Diana as the goddess of the hunt. And so Apollo turned her into a rose as punishment. Oh, okay. Another lesson says the same goddess that the beautiful maiden Rodanthe sought refuge from her army of suitors in Diana's temple. And Diana became jealous of all the suitors that this girl had. And so she turned her into a root, uh, into a rose and made the suitors into her thorns. Are you laughing at me? Oh, yeah, ruse. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> and then another story is that Zephyrus, the god of the wind of the west wind, fell in love with Flora. So we're back to Flora again. Mm-hmm. The problem was she only cared about flowers. And so he turned himself into a rose to catch her eye. And when she spotted the rose, she gave it a kiss. So, of course, he got what he wanted. But that goes right back to the Roman gods inability to observe boundaries. I mean, think about Zeus and he's always impregnating mortal women. Mm -hmm. You know, Mm -hmm. yeah, the Roman gods were something else. The correspondence is the element that goes with rose is water. The magic is Love, fidelity, dream magic, wow, dream magic, happiness, healing, divination, attraction, and protection. Okay. The deities are Isis, Venus, Eros, Cupid, which I think those are the same two gods, just one's Roman and one's Greek. Correct me if I'm wrong. Lilith, and of course, Venus. Venus is the goddess of love. I know that Uh, one. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> chakras it goes with the heart and crown it's associated with the day of friday oh it's stone association is the desert rose and it an astrology it goes with venus and it has a tarot card association which is the empress i found so much oh, more on roses so cool. like the next one i'm going to talk about i couldn't find hardly anything on but did you also know the rose is the flower of the United States. Oh, I did not know that. I bet your husband knows that. I bet my husband Probably. knows that. Probably. We're all in our own la la lands. And I know. Over here. Our husbands are good <laughs> plant people. So I would not be surprised if they knew that. I didn't know that, though. I didn't know. It was Ronald Reagan that um, designated the rose as the flower of the United States, like back in the 80s sometime. Oh, Okay. So Fun that's fact all I, that I'll never forget. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll remember that. But yeah. will we remember what herbs we've talked about? No. <laughs> now I know I talked I talked about talking about wow lavender, <laughs> but we have gone a little far, like long in this Cause, episode because <laughs> we talk too much. Yeah, so maybe we'll do a part two, or maybe we'll do like a mediator, like a we'll do this one, and then next week will be a different ep- uh, episode. Oh my gosh, my brain be another topic, and then we'll hop back into, it, and then I'll talk about the rest of our like the luck ones that I did, or maybe we'll blog about these or something. I think so. I mean, there's so many crystals and herbs, and uh, you know, all kinds of things that we can talk about that we've got. Um episodes for years on those I things. know I so. know but like how many episodes I mean we're gonna do all of them but like I know a herb episode after an herb episode after an herb yeah. episode is a little I mean yeah you guys people want people like Greg new, would love different. that yeah yeah Greg would be very happy but other people might say <laughs> we're, we're we're tired of the plants move on yeah, to something yeah. else <laughs> let's talk about crystals we could, there's a lot of crystals we, we there's a lot of crystals either. too except for amethyst which I will never forget oh my gosh with amethyst. <laughs> I love the amethyst. Uh, but uh, okay, so, so you do the yeah, outro because if I, I can remember, <laughs> didn't write it down this time. Me neither. So thank you for listening. Yes, <laughs> that's what they do. They listen to us. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Let's start that over. Okay. Thank you. Nope. 
that's not what I wanted either. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's it on everything. So thank you for listening. You can find us at our website. That's www.c3witchypodcast.com. There you will find links to literally everything. Our TikTok, our Patreon, our Buzzsprout, our... I'm going all over the place. Facebook, Facebook. Twitter. Yeah. What else am I missing? I don't know. <laughs> Everything. But y'all can find them all there. Yeah. It's also great for you guys to review us. You know, if you like oh, us, yes. give us a five star. Tell your friends. They give us five stars. Five stars. You guys can rate us however you think. But rating absolutely helps. Yes, for sure. If you love us, because of course you love us, come support us through yep. either Patreon or through Buzzsprout. You can get to both of those from our website as well. It w- really helps. It goes a long way. You guys don't don't know what goes into producing this yeah. thing. And yeah. uh, thank you so much to our patrons and uh, subscribers. You Absolutely. guys are amazing. We really, really, really couldn't do this without you. And we appreciate yeah. you. And Please feel free, everybody, to email us. Our patrons are great about interacting with us, and we just love it. It makes uh-huh. our day. Uh-huh. We'll we'll text each other at work. Did you see we had a comment from yeah. Greg? Or we yeah. had, you know, and so it's so much fun. Please, please feel free to reach out to us or talk to us on our social media, which will help the social media engage other people to come yeah. and listen to us. Yeah. Check you out your Etsy store. My Etsy store. I have a lot of witchy stuff. Um, haven't had a chance to put a lot onto it, but I do have like familiar collars and all kinds of altar tools. I've got little resume, uh, resume. Wow. Resume. At, <laughs> at the May, my poor brain at the May, um, resin athame that's where that came from <laughs> resume i like that <laughs> resume i got resumes uh in my store come just come look at my store it's www.batsandbobblesinc.etsy.com our merch is there too so come and support us that way as well plus you get to walk around with cool shirts and shit cool, from yeah. us how Who cool is that, that? <laughs> right yeah so we will be back we'll be back And until then, stay witchy. Woo.